This is an OCR A-level biology video on microscopy. It also is, looks at um, graticules and how to uh, calibrate them. So let's just get started with microscopy, which is the first thing you'll probably learn in biology. And um, we've got these two definitions. Let's slow it down completely. So we've got firstly magnific magnification, which is the number of times larger an image appears compared to the size of an object and we've got resolution which is how detailed or clear the specimen is so it shows high detail clearly and usually we're looking at the clarity of this image so high resolution you've got images looking sharper and you should know that from TV screens a high resolution TV will have clearer images images look sharper okay so that just learn those two definitions that have been written down there um, now let's compare some different types of microscopes and something you've probably looked at already before we've got optical or light microscopes, laser scanning scanning electron microscopes and transmission electron microscopes so optical microscopes are cheap, they're easy to use they're probably the ones you've used in school portable, you can examine whole and living organ specimens um, they have a magnification up to between 1,500 and 2,000 times as their maximum. They use visible light which is 400 to 700 nanometers and their maximum resolution is 0.2 um. So anything that is below 0.2 um basically appears as one image on an optical microscope so you can't really distinguish between, dis distinguish between those two um, things. Then we've got laser scanning microscopes which basically form this 3D object. They scan an object point by point using lasers and these lasers then um, help create a high resolution, a high contrast image with depth, depth sensitivity. You view it on a computer on a special program and you can rotate around the specimen and observe it from different angles. Okay. Then we've got a scanning electron microscope which uses electrons which bounce off specimen surface. Um, this creates a 3D image. These electrons are focused onto a 3D screen. Um, and they, But to work it has to be in a vacuum so it can only be used on dead specimens. But look at the huge difference here. We can get a 500,000 times maximum magnification and 0 0.002 um, micrometers resolution. Finally we've got a transmission electron microscope which is also known as a TEM um, T -E -M, which produces a beam of fast traveling electrons which are 0 0.004 nanometers wide. They're fired from a cathode um, and focused onto a photographic plate this produces a 2D grayscale image and once again you have to use a vacuum and you can only get use dead specimens because of this. However it produces a humongous 1 million times magnification maximum and you can see an ongoing trend here in the resolutions 0 0.2, 0 0.002 and then 0 0.0002 for the transmission electron microscope. Okay, so that is just the comparison of your different microscopes. Just know some advantages and disadvantages. These, this SEM and TEM, and laser scanning to a point, require specialists to operate them. Often people have to get a really, I'm not sure what the degree is, but an actual degree which involves operating these um, machines. They're not something that ordinary people can just pick up, like optical microscopes pictured here, and they can show intense details. And obviously, the big disadvantage of them, we can't observe living specimens with them. But optical microscopes allow us to observe living specimens. To work out the magnification of an optical microscope, you do the total magnification equals the objective lens, which is sort your eyepiece lens, and your objective lens. So your objective lens times your eyepiece lens magnification. So, so if your eyepiece is times 4, 
and the objective is times 10, you've got a times f total magnification of times 40, okay? And you can have various different objective lens um, put in. So how can we use this light microscope? I don't actually write it down here, but we've got a coarse focus and a fine focus. And first of all, if you've ever done this before, you're going to get your um, specimen. So the specimen will be on its slide that you've pre-prepared. I'll teach you how to prepare a slide, which you need to know as well. And then you put it on the stage and clip it into the stage so it doesn't move around. Then you shine the light so you some you either have a light source at the bottom or a mirror in this one and you basically reflect the light through so it's transmitting through your specimen. Once you've got the light travel traveling through the specimen into the um objective lens, you make sure you have your lowest power objective lens, you look through the eyepiece and it will not be focused, so use the coarse focus here to focus the microscope. Once you get the closest focus you can get, you can use the fine focus then to adjust it and get the best clarity, so the best resolution possible. Once you've got your optimal resolution, you never touch the coarse focus after that. Then you just increase the objective, you can change the objective lens, it will be out of focus then, you do not touch the coarse focus, and you just use the fine focus after that to get the right resolution. And you can just make small adjustments to your fine focus knob. It's about with a K. Um, so that is how to use a microscope. And most people have used a microscope to this point. Um, so next we're going to look at how we can make a slide. So there's three sort of ways you can use a wet mount, a dry mount or a laboratory prepared one which uses wax first of all we have to stain our samples though because if you don't stain the sample if you observe unstained specimens many biological structures are colourless and transparent so some microscopes can use light interference rather than light absorption to show a clear image without staining um, or you could put a dark background against an illuminated specimen to study the living organisms because quite often you do not want to stain a living organism as it often the stains can be quite toxic so to observe an unstained specimen you'd use either a black, a black background to see these clear specimens or you can use a light interference rather than light absorption to show a clear image without staining. Um, but we're going to look at staining and how we can use staining to um, help us see different parts of the organism. So you stain the sample either using methylene blue which shows DNA, eosin which so shows cytoplasm, um, you can use acetic orosin, which shows DNA, I think in navy, and chromosomes in red. Pseudum red, which puts lipids in red. Iodine, as you probably recognise from the biological molecules test, can um, help find starch and also show cellulose, I think in a yellow-brown colour. Um, then we've got these two methods of preparing slides. So we've got a wet mount and a dry mount. So a wet mount... Um, you've probably done this before, you prepare a small drop of water onto the slide then you use tweezers to place your specimen on top of that drop of water you cover the spec specimen with a slip it's called a cover slip and you make sure there's no air bubbles between the specimen and the cover slip you add stain to one side of the cover slip and put a dry paper towel on the other side of the cover slip and that dry paper towel will draw the stain across the specimen um, and until the paper towel absorbs that stain. We also have a dry mount which basically doesn't involve the water but involves every other step. Um, you just cut as thin a slice as possible and you place a cover slip on top of it and observe it. So I'm sorry that this actually damages that um, it's because I, I wrote this earlier and then copied and pasted it back and it just sort of messed this up um, 
So how can you make a lab prepared slide? We can dehydrate the specimen, then we embed it in wax, and then we use a special machine to make, create really thin slices of this wax. And the wax helps preserve the specimen so it doesn't get broken down by organisms and these thin slices make light be able to transmit through them. So now let's look at some calculations and using graticules um, including their calibration here. So first of all this equation I am and that, just learn that triangle just say I am and then you know which one's on top and which one's on bottom. Um, this is used so we've got image actual magnification and you should know how to use these triangles the one you want to find out, so if you want to find magnification you cover that cover the M up and it's I over A, so image over actual, that's what you'll do if you want to find out the image you do actual times magnification because so, you cover up I, if you want to work out actual cover up A and it's image over magnification, that's how you use those triangles, I hope most people would know how that how to do that already so here we've got a a cell, let's pretend it's an amoeba cell, okay, so we've got two sides here, X and Y, so a photomicrograph of this cell, a photomicrograph of the cell, and you have to measure it with your own ruler, the distance, and let's pretend the distance you measure is four centimetres, you get four centimetres, then you're told the magnification here is times 80. Okay, so you've got times 80 magnification and 4 centimetres image length. You want to find the actual size of this organism. So you cover up A, so our calculation will be image divided by magnification. So 40 millimetres times 1,000, because let's remember when we're dealing with microscopy, you usually want your um, units to be in... Um, micrometers and sometimes nanometers but to get from millimeters to micrometers you always times by a thousand okay so 40 millimeters times by a thousand you get 40,000 micrometers 40,000 divided by a magnification of 80 equals 500 so our specimen is 500 micrometers and something that is 500 micrometers wide as amoeba okay so that could be the question you've got a cell of amoeba x to y you measure that the furthest distance usually they'll have an x and y you just have to measure it with your ruler um, the question can also be altered so sometimes um, it will give you the actual size and you have to measure the image and it asks, asks you to find out the magnification so you just do image so 4,000 micrometers um, sorry 40,000 micrometers divided by your actual which we would have told you is 500 um, micrometers and then you end up getting your magnification of 80 okay so just learn that triangle and you pretty much be able to answer any question so now let's look at graticules, which is personally I find slightly harder. Um, so you've got a stage graticule and an eyepiece graticule. So eyepiece graticule is in arbitrary units, but the stage graticule, you always know how big each division on your graticule is. Um, usually, typically, each division on a stage micrometer is 0 0.01 millimeters, which equals 10 micrometers okay usually it'll just tell you it's 0 0.01 10 micrometers but always look out for the question it should always tell you how big the division is but if it doesn't i'd probably assume it's 0 0.01 millimeters which equals 10 micrometers okay because we we times that by a thousand to get 10 micrometers so what we do here you have an eyepiece which is this one and your stage micrometer here and you need to calibrate this eyepiece micrometer at every single um, different magnification you use. So to calibrate it, first of all, you've got to 
just basically take take one stage micrometer division if it lands on an exact point like it does here so we're quite lucky here so we just used one and we know the length of that one um, that one division one full division here is 100 micrometers because we've got a 10 micrometers each one and there's 10 of them here so 100 micrometers is this and so we get the exact same points on our eyepiece graticule so they fall exactly in line that is 100 micrometers so we count up how many um, eyepiece divisions we've got and here we've got 15 eyepiece divisions within our 100 micrometers so we do our 100 micrometers divided by 15 and we get 6.7 and that was I think it was 6.6666 and I just rounded it up to 6.7 so now what I've done here is put on a specimen okay so our specimen is this specimen is a dust mite when in actual fact the picture is of a flea I originally was going to do a flea but the numbers didn't work out to be the size of a flea it ended up being the size of a dust mite let's just pretend this is a dust mite most of you don't know the diff probably would not recognize the difference between a flea and a dust mite and I wouldn't unless I didn't go to Google sorry if I've offended any dust mite or flea enthusiasts but I've used a flea for this example okay it doesn't really matter what does matter is it's the end of it is here on 40 and the other end is on 77 just take my word for that so there's 37 eyepiece divisions okay 37 eyepiece divisions is this flea because let's remember let's remember once we've calibrated it we take this stage micrometer away and this ends up being our sample okay you can't see the stage micrometer anymore so we we can just see the eyepiece graticule and we see it's 37 eyepiece divisions so quite simply you do 37 divided by sorry 37 times by each eyepiece because we've got 37 of 6.7 uh, micrometers so 37 times 6.7 equals 247.9 micrometers and that is the actual size of that flea well it's an actual size of a um, dust mite and what I do right here this is not a dust mite it's a flea okay so that is how you uh, calibrate a graticule and then work out the size from a graticule and obviously in questions you might not be asked to do this all it might just tell you the eyepiece eyepiece division is 6.7 so work out the rest of it and from there that's literally just the times the amount of eyepiece divisions and you get your actual diameter okay so that is all on microscopy I'm gonna cut this video here now and do a separate video for the second half of 2.1 because microscopy took quite a long time to explain even though it's not that hard a topic but the next video we're going to be looking here at membrane bound organelles, non membrane bound organelles, and comparing eukaryotes to prokaryotes. Okay, thank you for watching.